and IMF reforms as well. But is it too late to avoid conflict in the region? We're keeping an eye on that story. An important meeting with Kerry and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov today. No closer to any kind of deal to avoid the conflict. Meantime, frustrated families gathered to hear news from Malaysian Airlines officials in Beijing today, pressing for clarification of reports about how long the missing plane emitted signals while flying. We'll talk to counterterrorism expert and former FBI agents Chad Jenkins and get his take on what could turn out to be the greatest aviation mystery since Amelia Earhart disappeared back in 1937. Good, good. I'm glad you do. Either sit down and keep quiet or get out, one or the other. We're done with you. All right, Chris Christie there in rare form. He came under fire from hecklers at a town hall meeting yesterday. New Jersey's governor also facing backlash after the state's Motor Vehicle Commission approved a new rule that prevents car manufacturers from selling directly to customers. Electric car company Tesla has called it a classic example of government officials protecting entrenched special interests. We'll discuss this and other hot issues in our political potluck segment coming up later in the show. And as we welcome you back to Hour 2 of America's Forum, J.D. Hayworth along with John Bogman. John, I don't know if you noticed the video of the heckler, but when I saw him there at uh, Governor Christie's town hall, he, he resembled, remember Pajama Boy of a couple of months ago in the whole ad campaign oh, about right. signing up for Obamacare? Yeah. I just got to tell you, my initial reaction it looked like Pajama Boy had grown a beard and gone to New Jersey to heckle Chris Christie. Now, I'm not suggesting a conspiracy. I know people can look alike, but that is my honest uh, take seeing that video. Chris Christie wasn't the guy having trouble. He usually gives better than he gets in those lively New Jersey town halls. Yeah, the whole tough guy antics of Christie not looking or not quite as effective with this uh, scandal hanging over his head still today. All right, let's move on real quick. We're going to talk about campaigns a little bit. Big money has already been spent in political ads around the country, and we're only now just getting started with the primaries and midterm elections of 2014. Much of the focus for Republicans, of course, will be on the president's failed health care plan, especially in races where the incumbent Democrat voted for Obamacare. But for Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid and others on the Democratic side, it's all going to be about the Koch brothers, big donors to Republican candidates and some other important issues as well. Senator Reid has called them un-American, but now conservative leaders and voices are fighting back against Reid's un-American comment. Joining us right now to discuss this is the editor of the National Review, Rich Lowry. Rich, it's great to have you with us. Hey, how's it going? Well, Rich, normally we read your words National Review, but you wrote a column picked up in the New York Post the other day about this whole uh, involvement of Harry Reid and the early marking of donors and demonization uh, by the Democrat leader. Encapsulate what you wrote in that Post column, if you would, please, sir. Well, one, obviously, J.D., there's the hypocrisy point, because if a Republican uh, were to call some major Democrat donor un-American, it would lead the, the nightly news and be a huge national uh, brouhaha, and whoever said it would be forced to back down immediately. But here, Harry Reid calls the Koch brothers un-American, and no one really uh, bats an eyelid except for some people on, on our side. And it's the idea that uh, if you were, you know, created a successful business that employs tens of thousands of people the way the Cokes have, and you take some of that wealth and you spread it around uh, on um, philanthropic ventures like aiding hospitals and cultural institutions in New York, and you're a libertarian and you're involved in the, the political process and try to support your own side, that that makes you un-American is just, I, don't, I can't even wrap my mind around it. And as I said in the column, if you're going to tally up people's contributions to America, I think there's a pretty good case that Cokes uh, have uh, done much more than Harry Reid ever will or could hope to. So what should be the Republican or conservative response? Just ignore this attack and continue to focus on Obamacare? Oh, I think you got to push back. you got to blow the whistle on Harry Reid. And they clearly the Democrats have some sort of focus group or polling showing that th this message at some level works. But I, I can't imagine it's going to make a difference in the midterm election because it's just such inside baseball you know and people are going to vote on what they think of obamacare what they think of the economy you know uh, of the the job market the idea that they're going to vote on the basis 
of what groups are being funded by whom and running what kind of ads, I think is just ridiculous. But the, the, it, it just speaks to the, the Democratic desperation, because they don't want to really talk about any of those other three big things I, I mentioned, especially Obamacare, so they're attacking the Kochs instead. Yeah, clearly it's a, an election year ploy by Harry Reid to get this out there so they don't have to spend uh, monies on their, on their anti coke uh, campaign commercials to run in these markets as well. But we know that, Rich. We know this is a campaign ploy, and it's meant to rev up the Democratic base. And so when we fight back against Harry Reid, uh, that maybe just furthers uh, the mission here and, and entrenches Democrats more to support Harry Reid on this issue. Well, uh, I mean, you just got to tell the truth and let it uh, let the chips fall where they may. I mean, he's made a ridiculous slur against private citizens, and, and that's the other thing. This is, uh, you know, this is a, a, a big national elected official punching um, beneath him. You know, punching at private citizens, and that's a it's a little. Uh, disturbing, especially when you couple it with all the the other things that have been going on to try to muzzle the right side of the debate. And that's what the IRS scandal is all about. That's what these new rules the I IRS is trying to um, implement um, with uh, with nonprofits that are engaged in in politics. So I think it's important, as I said, to to blow the whistle and and call call Harry Reid on this. Yes, especially when you look at the money spent by unions as well. And we also want to move on real quick, also, and talk about Chris Christie. Uh, Rich, while we have you here, we saw the, the, the governor getting heckled there yesterday. What would you think about that? Well, he, apparently it was an event near a, a college, so you had a, a lot of uh, a ready supply of pajama boys, as, <laughs> as J.D. would uh, put it, pajama boys and pajama girls that's who are willing to stand up and shout, I'm, I'm against all hecklers, right or left. I, I think it's rude and un, uncalled for. Um, you know, but Christie has been hurt more than I thought initially in this Bridgegate scandal. I still don't think he's doomed or, you know, his political career, career is dead, but he's underwater now in polls in New Jersey, and people apparently just don't believe his denials, and it's really corrosive of his brand and his, his standing as a potential presidential candidate. Rich, the curious thing about Chris Christie, and uh, though I may disagree with him on some policy issues, what really endeared him to me was that pugnacious style in those uh, town halls uh, that continues that really is in his wheelhouse. So perhaps just getting back in the town halls and mixing it up will help his numbers. But y you'll recall, Rich, uh, back when we were both much younger in 1992, Bill Clinton was the comeback kid. Does that scenario exist now for a governor named Christie in this uh, upcoming presidential election 2016? It could. I mean, the the race is wide open, as I, and I say he's not necessarily doomed, and uh, maybe time will heal this wound. And if all the investigations come up with nothing, you know, he, let, he, let me ask he, you sure. something else that's going on here. Uh, we're getting news: Scott Brown in New Hampshire, uh, taking a look at the situation there, making speeches. Do you expect Scott Brown, the former? Massachusetts Republican Senator, a senator to officially announce uh, his candidacy from New Hampshire, and will that portend a possible breakthrough for the GOP? Yeah, I, I think it's it's almost certain that he's going to get in. It's good news for the Republican Party, and that it widens the number of plausible Senate races uh, they have, and it's going to stretch the Democrats even further in terms of resources and money. Now, I don't think you would favor Scott Brown in that race necessarily, but it's going to be another seat that Democrats are going to have to worry about and, and have to um, expend resources defending. There's two more things, Rich, we want to talk about before we let you go here, and that's 2016, of course. Uh, ben Carson was a big hit at CPAC. We know Rand Paul won the straw poll. What do you think about CPAC, and does that tell us anything about 2016? And also, uh, Sarah Palin emerging here on the scene again. Is Sarah Palin going to be a factor as we look ahead uh, to 2014 well, and 2016. I think, uh, my takeaway from CPAC is, is folks on the right are fired up and ready to go to coin a term. And my takeaway from the presidential politics of CPAC is just it's as wide open as it's ever been. There's no front runner, there's no clear favorite establishment candidate, you know, and, and uh, the history is in Republican primary politics that there's a lot of drama and a lot of tumult, a lot of ups and downs. But then the, the establishment guy almost always invariably wins. It's not clear you know, who that establishment guy is going to be or how strong he's going to be. So it's going to be uh, um, a, a fascinating, wide-open 
race, and uh, every day is going to be like Christmas for political pundits like us. And will we be talking about Sarah Palin in 2016 at all? I don't think so. All right, fair enough. Don't Let me just ask you this, because we've seen a chorus of, uh, of consultants saying it's going to be a huge Republican year. The other day, Carl Rove said, not so fast. Your take on uh, what will happen in November, Rich? Oh, I think it's shaping up as a very good Republican year. The problem is that to actually get the six seats you need in the Senate, you're very likely going to have to knock off you know, a handful of Democratic incumbents, and that's just always easier said than done. Rich Lowry, as always, we appreciate your perspective. We look forward to visiting again with you very soon here on America's Forum. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, gentlemen. And